Okay, welcome to our second example on elasticity. So in the last example, we figured out what the Young's modulus of this wire was as it was suspended from a ceiling and it was holding on to this little mass block, whatever you wanna call it. And we use this relationship between the stress and the strain as well as Young's modulus to figure out what the Young's modulus was for this wire. Now, in this example, I have a concrete column that has a diameter of 50 centimeters and it has a height of three meters. And it's supporting a mass of 200,000 kilograms being applied to the top of this column. And the question is asking, how much is the column compressed? In other words, what is delta L as this mass is being supported on top of this column? So I'm going to write that relationship that we saw up there down here. So we have pressure or stress, excuse me, F over A is equal to your Young's modulus times delta L over L. Now, so far we've been studying this relationship and how it relates to materials that are in tensile stress. In other words, when we have something like this rod uh, and we apply a force, the rod is going to elongate by some amount delta L. And so all this derivation that we did, uh, we did with a force uh, in tensile stress. In other words, a tensile force was being applied. But here, in this example, we have a compressive force being applied to the top of the column. So I wanna be clear that this relationship right here is technically valid for both stretching and compressing so long as it is happening within the linear range of the graph that we first studied. So I'm gonna redraw that graph down here. And that was uh, really a relationship between delta L and the force being applied to some sort of rod. So the higher the force, the more the rod would uh, stretch. And there was a certain zone that the force was directly proportional to the amount that that rod was stretching. And we call that region the linear region. And we found out that the slope of this was equal to our k value, our spring constant. And so our relationship really became f is equal to k times delta l. Now, if you go past this linear region, you're going to notice something very interesting. The amount of force required to keep pulling this rod and stretching it is going to be less and less. However, this zone right here, so this zone right there, uh, and that is up to that point, this is called the elastic region. It's not linear anymore after this point right here, but if you were to let go of the force and bring it back down to zero, the material would still go back to its original position without being permanently deformed. Now, if we go past the elastic region and we continue pulling on this rod, it's going to start deforming permanently. And that's what we call our plastic region. And if you pull it hard enough, there's going to be a point here known as the breaking point. And this is where the material or the solid breaks. What does this all have to do with this example? Well, because we've been studying tensile forces and we've been looking at this graph and this relationship as a tensile force that was pulling on the material, I wanna make clear that even though we're compressing this concrete column in this example, we're only studying this compression within this linear region. And therefore, we can technically compute how much this column gets compressed instead of stretched. Anything beyond this linear region, there's some more ways to calculate how much something gets compressed. Okay, so let's go back to this example. So because the mass is 200,000 kilograms, we need that in terms of force, and we know that force is equal to mass times gravity, where G is our gravitational constant. So our force is going to be 200,000 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. Awesome, well, what about the area? The cross-sectional area of this column is a circle, and the diameter of that circle is 50 centimeters. So the area is going to be none other than pi times r squared. Well, what is r? If the diameter is 50, r is 25. 
And if we want this in consistent units, I'm gonna convert 25 centimeters into meters by dividing by 100. So that gives me 0 0.25 meters. So the radius is 0 0.25 meters here, and we're gonna square that. Now on the right side of this equation, our unknown is this delta L, how much this concrete column is going to compress. We know the length, and from tables and from resources anywhere, we can use a value of the Young's modulus for concrete to be equal to three times 10 to the 10th Newton per meter squared. And finally, the length is three meters. So if we plug all of these values in to this equation right here, we should be able to solve for delta L. So on the left-hand side, we have that 200,000 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. And all of that is divided by the area, which was pi times 0 0.25 meters squared. And this is equal to three times 10 to the 10th Newton per meter squared, which is Young's modulus, times delta L, which is our unknown, over three meters. And if we just solve this out, we get delta L is equal to 0 0.9992 millimeters. So when a 200,000 kilogram mass is sitting on top of this concrete column, the force exerted by that mass on this concrete column is going to deform or compress this concrete column by some amount delta L and it is roughly one millimeter.